Yeah. Well, I mean, he in some ways, I mean, I think Jody Weiss was um, set up for failure by the way he got the job. I mean, I mean Mayor Daley went outside of the police board, um, brought this guy in in kind of a secret process, gave him double the, you know, over $300,000 salary on, under the guise of him having two jobs. And, um, and, and he's an FBI agent, not a, what has never been a street cop, mm -hmm. comes from Philadelphia. So he was, you know, you couldn't have put more obstacles in front of this guy. And then I think he made some stumbles early on. But just when he seems to be able to getting the hang of the job, uh, maybe he's out. Now, he also uh, got a bad rap because um, the media played up. Uh, particularly last summer, um, uh, some visible incidents of crime, but crime was really down, mm -hmm. was going down, but it made it seem as if uh, the streets were out of control, which just wasn't the case. And so now you have Terry Hilliard coming in and reversing what Jody Weiss did. Jody Weiss was brought in to reverse what Phil Klein did, right. who replaced right. Terry Hilliard. So. That's right. I don't know what's going on. And, and I think the, the final point I would just want to make, though, is that I would be shocked if, if what Terry Hillard is doing is happening without the approval of Rahm Emanuel, mm -hmm. because you just don't bring in an interim police chief and let him re make such dramatic changes if a new police chief is going to come in and then bring his own program in. Then this is a waste of time and effort and energy. Plot thickens. I, I want to. I want to speak with you, Matthew. We're going to shift gears here shortly. I want to come back to these credit cards, so get that ready. I think we got sure. one more phone call on the line. Caller, are you on the air? Caller, you're on off 63rd. Talk to me, Calvin. You know, I, I was listening to Tim earlier. I don't know whether Tim was born in the same era I was or not, but I remember when Octa Park actually had hedges out there. You know, bottom line is this. And not only that, everybody's talking about Judy Weiss talking about Terry here, you've got these commanders at these police stations that run the show actually out there. you got to make sure that these people do their job in order for the police to do their job. i got a little personal story I'm going to tell real quick, not that, I, not that I'm bitter, but I am angry. I, I got robbed on 76 in the Racine, mm. and guess what? A police car didn't even show up over there. Mm. You know, bottom line. But I'm just saying that with the police out there, I know they're a little bit under man and under staff, but hey, the people that's out there, at least if they do their job, you know, we wouldn't have as many problems as we had. And remember the incident on 95th where the kid got shot up there yeah. by the L station up there? Yes, sir. That was completely bogus also. You know what? Calvin, man, I really appreciate your phone call. Calvin is passionate about this, and it's, it's frustrating to me to see the violence continue in this city. I think that the police department is doing the absolute best that they possibly can. I think we have to start putting the onus on some of these neighborhoods and some of these families, shifting gears to this credit card debacle that's taking place now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a bridge here because I think with this terrible recession that we're in, high unemployment, uh, people being laid off, you've got people abusing credit cards. Mm -hmm. Matthew, I'm coming to you. Sure. Credit card companies are touting that they're giving money away. Hey, you get cash back <laughs> if you sign up today. What's up with that? Well, that's the enticement. You know, they've figured out certain mathematical formulas, algorithms, if you want to call it that, that if they give you incentives, most people, a good chunk of people will not either A, be able to pay off the credit card within say a 90 day time frame, 60 day time frame, 30 day time frame to get that reward. Or most people will carry a balance going forward if they continue to give incentives or cash back programs. Now, it creates a second economy because if you charge up X amount of dollars in a credit card, you either get cash back or you get airline reward and use smartly, it creates a secondary currency for you. But this, the odds are stacked against them. They understand that most people with a credit card without wise financial discipline and understanding how to use money and how to use a credit card smartly because we all, of course we all went through the college courses on how to use a credit card, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're going to figure the fact that you're going you're gonna to blow it and the benefit is for them to charge you interest on the road. You know what, Erica, I'm coming to you with this. When it comes to the lack of education on credit cards, we, we shouldn't learn this in college or even in high school. We should be getting this at a much earlier age. Why is it that people in the United States 
in a capitalist society, we're not taught how to respect loans and how to respect credit cards. I think it's a generational issue. I think that it starts at home, and if at home parents don't know, don't understand, and have a bad relationship with money, um, it's going to continue. And and since there is nothing happening, you know, in in school curriculums and all of that, it, there is nothing to really stop that from happening. So I think that's really the issue, and I think it's something that needs to happen maybe on a community and academic level, so that that foundation of knowledge is there yeah. at home to build on. I like that. Steve, abuse of loans, abuse of mm. credit, the Beachwood Reporter. You guys ever covered anything that, that talks about how people just don't manage their money correctly? Well, not that exactly. I mean, I mean the things that we've uh, uh, been more interested in are um, uh, like the regulations and the you know every time you get a credit card reform the consumer reform act it's written by the lobbyists for the credit card companies <laughs> and you and, and you know as you say you know it's there's as much as we should talk about our own responsibility uh, a lot of uh, these credit cards even for the most upright uh, financially wise person they're designed to deceive you and designed to to you know who can read all of that fine print really yeah. and so uh, uh, but and and yet we don't see just like like Wall Street reform and financial reform. we don't see real reform we never see that we never see it and Matthew before I shift gears and talk about Libya imploding and Chris Brown exploding <laughs> these banks man are they holding cash I mean they've been bailed out and they still don't want to loan the cash to to individuals and the businesses what's up with yeah, that I mean this afternoon I was having lunch with a friend at the Thompson Center and people are outside picketing that banks aren't loaning them money. Uh, the banks have been bailed out, but the people have been sold out. Mm. And they have been bailed out to the point where, okay, they said, government, we need help. They came in with TARP funds so they can borrow from the government our taxpayer money. And then at the same time, now they're well capitalized. Well, what's up? You've got the money, you've got the backings, you're well reserved. How come you're not letting lending go to small business owners and people to allow them to re uh, refinance or modify the loans? You know, that's, that's, the big, that's the big dilemma right now, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, Libya, Mu Muammar el Gaddafi, mm -hmm. the man you love to love, depending on who you are, and the man some love to hate. What in God's name is going on with Mr. Muammar Gaddafi? Erica, help me out. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to set the oil fields on fire. Well, what's up with that? Well, I, I think really the reality of the situation is, I mean, he, Gaddafi's been known to be a, an eccentric character for decades now at this point. So I think really looking to expect any kind of coherent response from him is, yeah. is not really uh, valid. I think the, the biggest um, development today is NATO um, jumping in on this and deciding to, to uh, essentially within days, they're saying, take over um, basically the defense part of, of this mission and right. to um, keep the no-fly zone in, 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 uh, in, in process. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Should we or should we not, gentlemen, bomb Libya? Looks like they've taken out some military uh, product already. What do you think, Steve, first? Frankly, I mean, I've been kind of confused about the situation and confused about where uh, I stand on it. And I can't quite figure out if uh, the president is has been unclear and confusing himself on the mission or if he's been brilliant in a different way in that now with NATO coming in and and trying to make sure it doesn't have an American face on it but does it real is it really American led or not oh, you got my you got okay. me rubbing my hands together. Right. oh man Let's I wish the show it. could just go two hours tonight <laughs> yeah. because I love president Barack Obama. I think he's just the best thing since, you know, yeah. banana cream pie. <laughs> However, <laughs> pie. there are dictators all over the world. There are genocides occurring all right. over the world. Mm -hmm. And it frustrates me when the United States almost picks and chooses. It's like, well, what about Rwanda? Mm. You know, what about the Sudan? Quickly, yeah. wrong move to bomb Libya. Should we just keep ourselves out? This becomes a third war for us, Matt Sapala. Rep, as a former United States Marine, as someone who's been there and who's been in the Middle East and someone who's been on ships and on missions, you know, we, we, we don't want to pull the trigger. 
Marines on the ground, we don't want to pull the trigger. Taking out human life is not something that, uh, yes, we're trained to do it, but something that deep down inside we don't want to, because at the end of the day, that's another father over there, that's another mother, that's another child. And to be able to pull the trigger on that and not really see your target on the ground, we know what's going on down there. So in my opinion, you know, it's, it's I would hesitate. Chris Brown. Oh, here we, we go. get to end the show <laughs> with entertainment. Chris Brown. I'm coming to you last, Erica. Chris Brown, Matthew, he implodes, breaks up with Rihanna a few years ago. Uh, beautiful woman, amazing talent. Still pretty, pretty much going bananas from that point. Yeah. Gets on Good Morning America, and Robin Roberts asks him a question about the past relationship, and he trashes the green room, throws a chair into the window, Glasses up on 43rd Street. What do you think? I think it's a sign of immaturity. And not only a sign of immaturity, but there's some issues there. You know, you're, you're a grown man. You're getting paid. You're a celebrity. That's the light. That's the spotlight you live in. That's part of the territory. And people are going to ask you about that stuff. And, yeah, you might have your opinion, but to be able to throw a tantrum like that in the green room, destroy property, and showing, knowing the fact that young men and women are watching you, are idolizing you, that, that's, a poor, that's a poor judgment. Steve, he takes his shirt off after the event, bearing all of his <laughs> tattoos, and and you know and you know and yeah, blonde hair. What do you? What? Come on, Steve. I, I I just can't figure out how he ever thought he wouldn't be asked about this. Yeah. I I mean, so again, someone else who's maybe living in a delusional world. There seems to be a lot of. Them. A lot of folks who are. I yeah. just, it's nuts. He, he needs some better management. Yeah. Erica, you get the last word, and then I'm going to go to Facebook, and I'm going to close the show. The thing is, anybody who does an interview, and Robin Roberts said this in on the Gail King show, he knew. She, she, she briefed him. The producers briefed him and said, these are topics we're going to be covering. He knew she was going to ask about this. So I'm not really sure if this was a publicity stunt mm, or if this yeah. was really, yeah. you know, how he felt. It just yeah. doesn't make any sense. And he has a brand-new album out. How convenient. I'm going to go to Facebook here quickly and then close the show. It looks like I've got an argument between a gentleman by the name of Dean and a, a young lady by the name of Michelle. And Michelle goes, a guy who beats women, damn right I've got something against him. Wow. I want to thank you guys for being on Off 63rd tonight. Thank you for watching Off 63rd. Thanks to my guests, Erica Flowers, Steve Rhodes, and Matthew Sapala. Continue the discussion after the show by calling my voicemail at 773-487-1352. Send me an email, Gerard at Off63rd.com. I will reply. And our website, www.Off63rd.com. Thanks for watching. Hey, remember, victory, it's yours. I need you to stay positive. Keep your head up and always be encouraged. Have a good night.